All right, here we're here in L.A. Radio Studio. It's the final broadcast uh, because the Ports of Call uh, Village here in San Pedro on the L.A. Harbor is being redeveloped into something called the San Pedro Public Market, which is a fancy name for a uh, new Retail fangled, hell. Uh, mini mall. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've you, seen, you guys sound a little bitter. Maxie, we've, seen, uh, we've seen pictures of it. Uh, we're actually being sarcastic about it. Pictures, uh, renderings from the designer, and it does look like a lot of steel girders and uh, white people walking around in an open uh, place. Uh, it looks uh, like P.F. Chang's the yeah, whole place. Yeah, you know, licking ice cream cones and uh, and talking to their dogs. And so I don't see that happening. <laughs> and there aren't a lot of, uh, there aren't any, as a matter of fact, retailers or restaurants or otherwise who have signed on for this thing. So it's a, it seems to me like either one of the two, uh, a boondoggle or a white elephant. Which, which is that? All players to be named later yes exactly anyway that's uh, those are sharp words and i've been here for f six hours talking about it so i figured <laughs> now's the time to do it but there's been a lot of hope and a lot of discussion and a lot of reminiscence uh, uh, uh about all the wonderful uh things that have happened inside this studio and a lot of it podcasts but then a lot of wonderful music has mm -hmm. happened as well mm -hmm. and in the studio with us now um a couple of musicians uh they play Every Friday at Ports of Call Waterfront Dining, the Ports of Call Restaurant, it's Annie and Renee. Uh, welcome to the studio. Nice Thanks, to see Phil. you. Thanks, you, know, you when, guys. when you get up on stage there at the restaurant, is it Annie and Renee? Is it Renee and Annie? Is it? Uh, do you battle over who gets top? You know, that's, it's actually uh, up it's been for a discussion. Bone of contention yeah, for, yeah, there was going to yeah. be some for discussion about, about that yeah. feeling. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, we figured we've been playing for thirty years. We might, we might switch it. What, yeah. do, you, what do you guys? Think? <laughs> okay, well, here's what I'm going to say right now. I'm a three-year veteran of Dylan Fest yes. ah. that you folks have put on. Thank you. And it's just a wonderful. Where were you the other wonderful... twenty-five years? <laughs> Uh, let's see. Do you, no. do you have a note from your mother? I do not. But no, it's a, it's a, that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And it continues to be just uh, dynamic. You've got great people playing. And um, gosh, they just keep showing up. Don't so, they? so the theme of the Dylan Fest, because I've not been to any of them, I apologize. I've just heard about it for the first time today. Uh, wow. Is the theme of it uh, Bob Dylan related or is it that style of music related? It's, like folk music. It's specifically Bob Dylan. He's a writer that has a, such an enormous contribution to the genre that as far back as 1967, somebody in Pakistan had already hosted the first Dylan Fest. Wow. Like, what? On the, on the power of the first five albums. and uh, Is we, that allowed? You're right. We started in Pakistan? it. Pakistan? Maybe not anymore. We started it in 1991, <laughs> and we've been doing it every year since. And every year, somebody plays at least one song that's never been played at any of our previous Dylan Fests. Oh, there's that body that. of work that yeah. you, could, you could make that happen. I think this year there were four or five that yeah. have never been played before. We get before. through over 60 songs in the day. No repeats. And yeah. it includes almost all the hits. Well, how do you pull that off, no repeats? Uh, you've got various uh, singing acts that come up, and you've all got to coordinate at some yeah. point and, well, and practice ahead of time. How does that work? That seems hard to do. It's one more one more layer of, of preparation. Like, yeah. A lot of the acts are return acts because uh, Renee and I are first and foremost performers ourselves. Uh, secondly, we're producers. And uh, so... We know a lot of the people. They're some of our best musical friends. And so we know what they might or might not play. And then everybody else, we ask them to submit us a, a list of the Bob Dylan songs they know or would be willing to learn uh -huh. in the order that they'd like to do it. And you put together then the, uh, right. Right. the, the program. Well, that's good. But is it also uh, open for discussion? I mean, I would guess... That if you were up on stage and I I yelled out, uh, uh, "Hard rain's gonna uh, uh, gonna fall." Right. Uh, uh, there's an A in there somewhere. A hard rain's uh, gonna fall. Is that right. what it is? Right. Yeah. If I just yelled that out, you guys could probably play it. Yes. On the spot. Yes. Right. True. And so most of the groups that play, you say, sixty acts. Mm -hmm. Sixty songs. Sixty songs from about how many acts? Right. About a 30. couple dozen. About thirty acts. About yeah. fifty-five to sixty-five. And, and I, I would guess maybe all of these musicians, if they had to make an adjustment uh, and call an audible at the last second, they could play a different well, song. Well, because of the no repeat clause, um, <laughs> there isn't. There aren't requests that come from the audience. It's all planned out before. You know, putting right. a, an eight-hour show together mm -hmm. requires not only um, you know no just. No repeats is just one element of yes. the planning. You know, you're talking about 
um, keys songs are in, tempos, you know, who's singing what, um, right. just all kinds of stuff. Well, what's right? fun about it, here's what I've done. You get a program when you go in. Yeah. There's a song list. Uh-huh. And you go, oh, wow, we're here. And upcoming is... This guy from Italy that comes every year and does wow. He what sings songs different songs do? every year. Yeah, he's, he's never been here done, for what three years now. He flies yeah. in from Italy from he, Sardinia. Yeah, in, yeah. in Sardinia. Italy and in uh, he goes to one in Ireland every mm-hmm. year. Does he? And uh, he he will go up and do forty songs in one night, forty wow. Bob Dylan songs. And his, interestingly. He is most attracted to the more recent Bob Dylan. Hmm. That's very unusual. Most people mm-hmm. hearken back to the early and mid '60s and the mid '70s. That's that's my period sure. for Bob, and then uh, and then and then individual songs here and there after that. But this fellow, his name is um, Al Deason. Al Deason. That's it. And he's he, the older or the newer stuff, the stuff from 2000 up to the present day. That's his favorite period. Well, he's wonderful. He's got he has yeah. he's got a he's got wardrobe. He I mean he does the deal. Yeah, yeah. he won't yeah. he doesn't play unless he's in character. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we had, we had a, yeah. speaking of in character. We had a guy in uh, college radio back in uh, I'd say 1979 or so. Uh, and we used to have news breaks in between the music from time to time because right. the, the journalism students had to learn how to do news. Well, he would do his entire newscast in the voice of Bob Dylan. Oh my God, that's funny. <laughs> 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 in a cartoon version of it, but you know, yeah. and it was that was fun. Um, so, uh, talk about the restaurant, Ports of Call Restaurant. I mean, it's been uh, a tenuous uh, six months or so. Yeah, well, oh. you know, we kind of found out that uh, the imminent demise was happening what last fall, maybe, and it was rumored. Then. Yeah, yeah, and so we, you know, we were sort of panicked because we play there every every Friday, and uh, you know, when you have a residency at a club, that's a pretty good thing to have, especially with uh, Jamie and all the people over at Ports of Call. They're great to us. Yeah. Um, they're super flexible with our schedule. If we, you know, we do a lot of other events and we travel sometimes, so they're really great with having a sub out. And, um, you know, we hadn't really played very much in, in San Pedro before. We mostly grew up in the South Bay and, you know, Hermosa, Redondo, Torrens, Manhattan up there. And um, Randy Bowers from Mollig Bank kind of introduced us to Jamie and uh, twisted his arm and said, give us a chance. And uh, what's happened is we've really found a nice home. And uh, now we have um, a nice group of people from San Pedro that come to see us. Yeah. How long has it been? Um, oh gosh, a couple three of years. Or, three or four, three? three at yeah, least. Sure. Yeah, at least. Well, that's, so, you that's know, a pretty good run. Yeah, so when you know, when we heard about that, we were so panicked, you know, thinking it was imminent, right? So then, of course, extension, extension, extension. So um, we're just grateful for each week we get to be there yeah. now. Yeah. I, you know, I, you guys are an interesting story. Would you just do that quickly, your backstory? We met in college. We went to the University of Denver. I was... Uh, a music student. Renee was in political science. Was was a marijuana legal in Colorado? Then? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just checking. Fairly, fairly widely used. Um, yeah. But uh, my girlfriend was a big fan of Renee's acoustic trio and wow. took me out to see them play. And back in those days, uh, it, we were a little looser on stage, uh, and they allowed me to get up and sing Night Moves with them. Oh, wow. And a couple oh. other songs, and... Uh, <laughs> And so then we did a show at the end of the year because Renee's band was very popular and they had a big thing in the gymnasium there, or the hockey arena. And uh, I played drums for them and a friend of mine from Canada played bass. And we had a great time and we had in those couple of rehearsals, we str- struck a pretty deep bond that carried over. We graduated within a month or two after that. We did wow. a total of three shows, and Renee stayed in Denver. I, w- I moved back to Canada, where I'm from, and we stayed in touch through the mail. You might remember letters. Yes. What's oh, oh, yeah, that's Vaguely. right. I forgot about those. So that's what stamps are for. <laughs> and I still have a couple of those letters from 1984, oh. 85, and they include the set lists that, oh. that were playing in our respective bands, and we both moved to Los Angeles independently of one another, end of 85, early 86, got together to do one gig you know do, do you know this do you know that we can put together enough for to get through the night and now i don't know 500 songs later and three decades wow still rolling so uh, the uh, relationship is purely musical and, and business right there's no nothing romantic going on renee is uh married to another guy 
uh, I was just about to work up the courage to ask her out about 20 years into the relationship. <laughs> and he swooped in. And, uh, wow, you know, they're sneaky. Yeah. Missed it by that much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, I thought maybe the, the grand mistake was when your girlfriend introduced you to Renee <laughs> back in the day and that you would have taken the opportunity then when perhaps you had the opportunity, but no. Well, it's good to be married to the correct person and play music with the correct person mm, because if that. you switch wow. them off, it might not work out right. as well. So, so uh, gosh, you're a musician. What was your gig again? Your real job is uh, what? Uh, what, did you, what were you? Well, I didn't. I, my my degree was in political oh, your science. Degree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so a yeah. musician, a political scientist. And, and, and Andy's a, was a hockey player on scholarship. He's an wow. excellent hockey player. What? So it's a requirement coming from Canada. Yeah, yeah sure, yeah, of sure. course. All right. So I was warned to stay away from hockey players. Well, so. I was impressed with your philosophical answer there about the uh, <laughs> <laughs> the right Red musician boy. and the yeah, right yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. life <laughs> partner. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's something. Hockey. Well, see, I have a hockey connection. I'm the public address announcer for the Anaheim Ducks. So oh, nice. Very cool. Nice. So you look like a couple of hockey players I've met. <laughs> he has teeth, though. Yeah. yeah. All of them. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, you look like you're serious about the game, though, so that's good. You can't play it. You can't play it half ass. No, I can't skate backwards. So what's what's the point? <laughs> yeah, that would definitely be a detriment in a yes. hockey game. Well, you right. two have done some interesting podcasts in this very LA radio studio. That that uh, I, I quite honestly, I, I have to just say I I admire very much that your enthusiasm for your subject, which is Bob Dylan, particular songs and what they mean and and how they've been translated and dealt with over the years. Has just always been at such a such a high level. I hope this studio has contributed to keeping that level up for you. Oh, Mike uh, is a great cheerleader and pushing us into various directions and coming up with ideas for for shows. It was actually, you know, as much fun as it was. It was kind of stressful mm-hmm. because, because we because we consider the material and the 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 writer so important to culture and to yeah. what we do. Um, we wanted the information to be interesting to us. We knew there was a lot to research, and it was fun doing it, but it was sometimes stressful. A lot of work. Well, I'll tell you, I, it was educational for me. I, this was something that I had a, you know, a minimal understanding of, but they were, they're just wildly informed. I hope well, they certainly, you know, you're going to keep this up, for goodness sakes. Yeah, I think we will. You know, it, we're, we're really busy with gigs and everything, yeah. but we, we'd like to continue doing them. Mike's over there giving us the thumbs up <laughs> in the control yeah, room. Yeah, yeah. Um, and go. I think that, you know, when you say it was educational, it was educational for us, too, mm. because we wanted it to be not just a couple of guys in a diner talking about Bob Dylan, mm-hmm. but, you know, actually researched aspects of his career or his songwriting or the arc of his his songs or whatever or you know uh you know the civil rights movement or yeah. the protest movement or you know this period or that period so we kind of we kind of made it a little less uh, off the cuff and more uh researched which was good and bad good for being interesting bad for maybe uh it's war time a... <laughs> management it's yeah. a lot of work yeah, yeah but but i i think it really enhanced m- my personal appreciation i mean if it needed to be enhanced anymore but right of bob dylan and and just the depth of uh of his art yeah 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 absolutely yeah agreed how about that so the podcast is going to live on regardless but uh, you you do still plan to do more episodes don't you yes yeah if, it, if that's something that's if possible in the future we, we'd love to do mike it. will you have them Absolutely. I bet, I, of course they do. Yes. <laughs> Without checking. saying, are oh, you kidding you know. Andy, stop twisting his arm. I'm, no, I'm all not about necessary. I, just I, be, I basically <laughs> begged them to be to do one. Right. So, uh, well, I, I had to check. You know, the last time I confirmed something on this pr- uh, program today, uh, you oh. know, I, I found out that that was something you didn't want to happen. <laughs> yeah, so, well, you know. we'll, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> All's forgiven. All right. You know, just a uh, you know, squeaky wheel. Yeah, exactly. Hey, I got a good song to take uh, hmm. take take us out of this one, this okay. segment. What do you have? I have Andy and Renee. What? Oh. Yes. Oh, I love them. In this studio, <laughs> doing a Bob Dylan classic, Subterranean, Subterranean Homesick, homesick Blues. Blues. I nice. It. I knew it. And we'll all be over to watch you guys in a few hours. Great. Okay. Yeah. We'll see you there. Thanks, you guys. All Thanks right. Thanks so much. Great to meet you.
trench coat, patch out, laid off. Says he's got a bad cough, but wants to get a beat I'm a lookout kid. Oh, the stand. 